Good morning, Latrinda Easton here, Church School Superintendent here at St. Andrews African Methodist Episcopal Church here in Sacramento, California, where the Reverend Philip R. Cousin Jr. is our pastor. We are here today, May the 22nd, 2022, for our Church School Bible lesson. And we are in our quarter on God Frees and Redeems, and we are almost to the end of Unit 3 of that quarter, Liberating Letters. We use the Precepts for Living Study Guide here at St. Andrews as our curriculum. And if you have your study guide, turn to the lesson for May the 22nd, or just grab your Bibles and um, turn to Galatians Chapter 5. Our study guide has both the New Living Translation and the King James Version Parallel, and I'm going to be reading the scriptures today from the New Living Translation. So our lesson for today here in our study guide is the nature of Christian freedom. And our Bible text for this morning is Galatians chapter 5, verses 1 through 15. And our lesson aim, as stated here in our study guide, is to discern the differences between legalism and freedom that comes with responsibility. Experience freedom as trusting in the work of Christ rather than our own efforts for salvation. And choose a life of freedom in Christ that is guided by serving and loving others with humility. Let's pray. Lord God, we just praise you and we thank you this morning for your gift of salvation. We thank you, Lord God, for this lesson that you have for us this morning. Lord God, we just ask that you would just speak to our hearts, Lord God. We want to hear from you. Lord God, open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to what you have for each of us individually this morning. And Lord God, we just give you all the glory and all the praise. And Lord God, we just ask that you would be glorified this morning through this lesson and through your word. Amen. I'm going to start with reading our In Focus story here in our study guide. What's wrong with you, Elijah? Ben asked as his roommate came in and slumped down on the couch. I'm tired. Between soup kitchen duty and my usher board meeting, I was helping the night ministry collect clothes for the homeless. It's exhausting serving God's people. I suppose, replied Ben, you have to pace yourself. Elijah went on like he hadn't heard Ben. I think I'm joining the sick and shut-in committee next. That would be good, right? Sounds like you have too much on your plate already. You might want to slow down. Nah, we're supposed to serve one another, right? Asked Elijah. How else am I going to stay on God's good side? Elijah, we should serve as an outpouring of God's love for us, not to gain points with him. Ouch, am I that calculating? Hey, I know your intentions are good, Ben reassured Elijah. Just understand that God has freely given us his grace. And because of that, we have his favor. So you don't have to figure out what to do when we can seek the Holy Spirit to guide our lives. You know, it is so easy for believers to get caught up in the extremes of legalism or catering to our fleshly desires. But you know, why is that? Well, you know, in our lesson today, we are continuing in Galatians. And last week, I will kind of um, repeat what I said last week about Galatians, the letters or the epistles. These letters were written or addressed to specific situations that were facing churches at the time. Now, this letter to the Galatians was written because there had been false teaching, had infiltrated the churches. And so Paul's letter to the Galatians here, the churches of the Galatians, it responds to these individuals and these teachings that were undermining and sabotaging the gospel. So now here in our precepts background, it talks about, so at the time that Paul wrote this letter to the Galatians, which is a, a group of um, Jewish Christians, um, there's a group of Jewish Christians, they were teaching that the Gentile converts, that these new Gentile Christians, that they needed to be circumcised as a sign of their covenant with God, as a sign of their relationship with God, and as a means of justification or as a means of being made right with God. And they were also insisting that they observe other parts of the law. Now, Paul had found this demand, as well as some others, had found this demand for Christians this demand to be circumcised to show that you are justified as a sign was in direct contradiction to salvation by grace of Jesus Christ. 
And in chapter four of this letter, Paul is reminding the Galatians that he's like, look, before you guys knew God, before you were saved, you were slaves to these pagan gods. You were slaves to sin. And he asked them, why would you want to be slaves again now that you are in Christ, now that you are in God? And Paul tells them, you guys, you are in Christ now. You are not children of bondage. You are children of freedom. Okay, so let's just jump in and just kind of look at what the passage is saying and what Paul is saying in his letter to these Galatians. So let's start with Galatians 5 and let's look at verses 1 through 6. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Listen, I, Paul, tell you this. If you are counting on circumcision to make you right with God, then Christ will be of no benefit to you. I'll say it again. If you're trying to find favor with God by being circumcised, you must obey every regulation in the whole law of Moses. For if you are trying to make yourselves right with God by keeping the law, you have been cut off from Christ. You have fallen away from God's grace. But we who live by the Spirit eagerly wait to receive by faith the righteousness God has promised to us. For when we place our faith in Christ Jesus, there is no benefit in being circumcised or being uncircumcised. What is important is faith expressing itself in love. So in today's, now remember, today's text begins in the middle of the letter of Paul's efforts to persuade the Galatians to stop following, stop listening to these false teachers who want them to be subject to the Mosaic law. And Paul is urging the Galatians that you guys need to stand firm in your freedom in Christ. And Paul explains that it's the Holy Spirit and faith, not the law, that makes your relationship right with God, that makes your relationship with God right. And Paul gives several points here in these six verses in his argument. So first, he He's speaking to circumcision because that's kind of the chief focus, which is the chief issue here that he's specifically addressing. So the first point he makes here is if you could be saved by keeping the law in this specific situation, they were specifically saying you have to be circumcised to be saved. He's basically saying if you could be saved by keeping the law apart from the cross of Christ, then he's saying like Christ's death would have been all for naught. There is no extra, Paul is saying, there is no extra required to make your salvation complete. And then the other point he makes is, he's telling the Galatians, trying to make yourself right with God by keeping the law, you end up cutting yourself off from Christ. Because there is no possibility that a sinner could ever gain merit in their own strength. There is just no way. And in those days, circumcision was a symbol of having the right background. It was a symbol of doing everything that was required by religion. And Paul's reminding them there is no amount of work, no amount of discipline, no amount of moral behavior can save you. So he's saying if you are continuing on finding favor with God by being circumcised, then Paul says you would have to obey all of God's law in its entirety, the rest of it. Because if someone requires one part of the law, here, circumcision, he's saying then that person is obligated to do all the works of the law. So he's like trying to save yourself by keeping all of God's laws. He says only separates you from God. And then he talks about the other point he makes here is around righteousness. So he's saying righteousness, if ever we are to gain acceptance with God, it has to come as a gift. It has to be received by faith faith, which in turn is inspired by the Holy Spirit and not something to be strived for. So he says here, faith working through love. He's like, that's the manifest manifestation of a life that knows it is saved by grace alone. Now, grace is a gift, okay? It's a, in, it, as a gift, it's free. So grace is not grace if there's any requirement for receiving it. And Paul had repeatedly said, told the Galatians that it is impossible to gain right standing or salvation through the law. Obedience to the law, though, is the fruit of that faith. And it's not the same as faith. Human effort cannot be added to God's grace. 
Okay, let's look at verses 7 through 12. You were running the race so well. Who has held you back from following the truth? It certainly isn't God, for he is the one who called you to freedom. This false teaching is like a little yeast that spreads the whole batch of dough. I am trusting the Lord to keep you from believing false teachings. God will judge that person, whoever he is, who has been confusing you. Dear brothers and sisters, if I were still preaching that you must be circumcised, as some say I do, why am I still being persecuted? If I were no longer preaching salvation through the cross of Christ, no one would be offended. I just wish that those troublemakers who want to mutilate you by circumcision would mutilate themselves. So here in verse seven, Paul is reminding the Galatians, look, you guys were new believers. You were striving in the faith. You were running the race well. You were staying the course. And then these false teachers pop up and they want to distract them from the truth, the truth of the gospel. But Paul tells these Galatians in his letter, he says he is confident that God will keep the Galatians from believing these erroneous claims and that they would return to the gospel truth and that they would realize that justification by faith means freedom, while the works of the law bring slavery. Now, those who are trying to confuse them, he says, they're going to have to contend with God's judgment for their behavior. And then he says, you know, these false teachers, they were not being truthful when they were telling people that Paul had preached that circumcision was necessary for the salvation. Those were not even true statements. And Paul uses an illustration here. He says, a little yeast causes a whole lump of dough to rise. And like the yeast, the false teaching, it's introduced quietly, it grows secretly, and as soon it affects every part of their lives. Because it only takes one person to infect all the others, one wrong person to infect all the others. And then Paul talks about the persecution. He's like, the fact that I'm being persecuted proves that he was preaching the true good news, the true gospel. Because he says, if he had taught what the false teachers were teaching, he's like, no one would have been offended. But because he was teaching the truth, the truth of the gospel, he was being persecuted. Now let's look at verses 13 through 15. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. But if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out, beware of destroying one another. So what Paul here has written about freedom from the law, it could be misunderstood to be a license to indulge. But that's certainly not what Paul meant. Because Paul here says here in these verses, he's saying more exactly what Christian freedom really is, what Christian liberty really is. And he's saying that true Christian freedom allows us the opportunity to love and to serve one another with humility. And he's saying here, Christian freedom is not a license to sin. Christian freedom allows the opportunity to love and to serve. Christian freedom is not a license to sin. It does not give us free reign to please ourselves. So Paul tells the Galatians, so don't abuse your freedom. And the text ends today, at least our portion of the text here ends today with Paul again reminding the Galatians that they were called to be free. He tells them they should not use their freedom as an opportunity to, to sin, but instead they should use that freedom to serve each other in love. And he says here that this freedom brought about by the gospel is not a license to sin, but an opportunity for love and service. He sums it up as that. And then he says, and by the way, you know, for those who are still concerned with the law, Paul writes that the whole law is summed up in this command from Leviticus, love your neighbor as yourself. And so Paul implores the Galatians to live lives that are just led by the Holy Spirit so that they don't give into their sinful nature. And Paul explains he explains it here, but he also explains it in his letter to the Romans that, you know, our sinful desires and then the Holy Spirit, they are just constantly at battle within the believer that tends to prevent the believer from doing what's right. So Paul is saying, live a life led by the Holy Spirit so that you don't give in to these things. So what do we learn and what is the application? What is the implication for us today. Well, I think we see judgment here. I think we see judgment here for those who turn away from the gospel. 
Those who turn to the law or to, for self-effort for salvation will only cut themselves off from salvation. But we also see a warning in Paul's letter and we see encouraging, Paul encouraging his readers and us not to defect, encouraging us to stay the course. Our liberating lesson in our study guide talks about, you know, our society is merit-based, meaning, you know, we perform to get awards. We perform certain duties at work to get a raise. We have to meet certain requirements to get A's, to get good grades in school. And some people even make these grand gestures to win the heart of somebody they love. We're enslaved by our own actions. We're enslaved to that. So it's a foreign concept that salvation is given by grace. It's not acts, it's not works, it's not any self-effort. It is a gift from God. So trying to be saved by keeping the law and being saved by grace, those are two, two things here. Paul makes a statement here in his letter, Christ will be of no benefit to you, meaning that Christ's provision for our salvation will not help us. If we're trying to do it on our own, if we're trying to do things in our own strength, obeying the law doesn't make it any easier for God to save us. All we can do is accept his gracious gift of grace through faith. Now, our deeds of service, those good things that we do, the obedience, those things should never be used to try to earn God's love or try to earn God's favor. We are saved by faith not by our deeds. Attending church doesn't save you. Being a good person doesn't save you. It's love for others, love for God, plus those deeds of service is in the response to those whom God has forgiven through his gift of salvation. God's forgiveness is complete. God's salvation is complete. And our faith expresses itself through love. Does your love for others reflect your faith? In our discuss the meeting, you know, in what ways might you be trying to work for or earn salvation? In what ways are you trying to earn brownie points with God? Are you working for salvation or are you walking in the spirit? You know, it's life, not the law, that changes behavior. A life in Christ, not the law, is what changes behavior and what transforms our hearts and what transforms our lives. And as you yield to the Holy Spirit, Christ's life is manifested, that faith is manifested in the fruit of the Spirit. And we're going to look at that next week. Oh, Lord God, we just praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for the freedom that you give us in Christ through your gift of salvation, your grace, Lord God. Lord God, we just um, ask that you would just help us to trust in the work of Christ rather than on our own efforts. And Lord God, just help us to choose a life of freedom in you that is guided by serving and loving others with humility. Amen. Okay, I will see you guys um, back here at 9 o'clock. We're going to get our praise and our worship on with our Victory Praise Team. And then I will see you at 1030 either on Facebook Live or for in-person worship at 2131 8th Street here in Sacramento. And next week, we're going to wrap up our quarter next week. And we're going to end with the nature. Oh, I got that wrong. I wrote that down wrong. Let me tell you next week. We are going to be, one second here, we're going to end on the spiritual fruit of freedom, and we're going to be in Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 through 26, and so that's your background reading for next week. You guys, be blessed, have a great week, have a blessed week, and I will see you back here next week for our Bible lesson.